everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Fallout in New Vegas. So in the last episode we finished a huge task, one of our main missions, so Hera can cross that off of her bucket list. She killed the guy who tried to kill her and she retrieved her property, which isn't precisely hers, but it was stolen from her one way or the other and we got it back. So, um, I guess as far as she's concerned, um, she's really free to do, you know, something else now and just have some fun in New Vegas and enjoy herself and this whole business of who's going to take over New Vegas at some point is really of lesser concern to her at the moment. That can wait for later. So yeah, let's just, um, explore New Vegas. As far as I can tell, the sun is going down, so... We're going to have a nice night view of New Vegas soon enough. And yeah, um, before I uh, move on, there is one thing that I want to do. Um, we got this little quest over here, Talent Pool. Find entertainers for the tops. Four of them. And I'm guessing the comedian over here might be a potential candidate. Now, I'm not sure if there's exactly four entertainers in this game that I have to find or if there's more than four and I have to be a little bit more particular about who I pick for this job because if I only need four and there's just you know four overall I think I already met all of them we have the comedian over here we have that musician back in Novak we have that musician that we met on the road and we have the ghoul comedian, right? I think he's looking for a job as well. So yeah, I'm not sure if I should just, you know, pick the first person that I meet, like him over here, or if I need to pick specific ones. I don't know. I guess I'm just going to talk to him and see if he wants a job. You again. You should meet my bookie. You have something in common. Every time I talk to you, I lose caps. Why do you lose caps when you talk to me? Nobody's paying you. <laughs> um, well, I can't really make him an offer. All right, then make it snappy, kid. This isn't exactly a lucrative career enterprise here. Yeah, maybe I can change that. Ah, here we go. Tommy Torini at the Tops is hiring entertainers I could put in a word for you. What do you say? Yeah? Hey, you're all right. Tell him I'll do it for a hundred a night. No, fifty. No, twenty. <laughs> Ten. Just don't rob me, I'll do it. You're really desperate, right? Bar the 25, don't sell yourself short. You're worth a lot more than that. <laughs> now that's interesting. I can actually barter on his behalf and basically make him earn more money. And that's one of the rare occasions where I actually have enough barter skills, so <laughs> let's use it. Whoa, geez, what was I thinking? You're right. I gotta go in there with a cool head, tell them how much I'm really worth. Honestly, um, I still think that you sure, kind of suck, but um, good luck to you anyway. I hope you will earn a little bit more money here. Okay, um, so we have one entertainer and like I said, I think I know where to find the other three. But um, that can wait for later, I'm sure. Now let's just um, look around a little bit. This is a lucky... 38. What's so lucky about it? Also, I don't think um, that it was actually on this side. It might be in the other part of the strip. So let's just look at whatever is going on in this part. Um, yeah, we have been to the tops. LVB station. I mean, this doesn't look that interesting, but... I guess I'll check it out anyway. Okay. Some NCR station? When I got this assignment, I was hoping there'd be more gambling. Yeah, you would think so if you're stationed in New Vegas, but now you're just sitting in front of a terminal. When I got this assignment, I was hoping there'd be more gambling. Apparently, they were all hoping for more gambling. So what exactly is this place? I bet it feels real nice to be carrying oh. those weapons around on the strip. That damn Mr. House has forbid any NCR military personnel from carrying any sort of firearms on the strip. 
Well, except for Captain Pappas. Mr. House still doesn't trust the NCR. A word of advice. The Securitrons won't put up with any funny <laughs> stuff out there, so don't do anything stupid. Is this your first time on the Strip? As a matter of fact, yes it is. Well, it's time to pop your Vegas <laughs> cherry, friend. I'm sure you'll have a blast and be drunk and capless in no time. I can give you a bit more information about the various casinos if you're not sure on where to get started. Okay, sure. Tell me about the casinos. Well, there's the Lucky 38, Ultra Lux, Gamora, and the Tops. Which one do you want to know about? Um, I don't know. Let's just ask everything. Tell me about the Ultra Lux. The Ultra Lux is the nicest casino on the Strip. Real high-end, extravagant, and expensive. Best you have a lot of caps if you want to go there. Okay. Um, I will check it out. I have a decent amount of caps by now. And what can you tell me about the Gomorra? Gomorra is the favorite of the NCR troops on the Strip. If you like girls, alcohol, gambling and drugs, then Gomorra <laughs> is just the place for you. Yeah, I think I've seen that in the other part of the Strip. I have been to the Tops, but let's hear his opinion too. The Tops is the cool place to be right now. Lots of entertainment and shows going on there as well as the gambling. If you want to catch a show and have a few drinks, you should definitely hit up the Aces Theater <laughs> in the Tops. Yeah, I'm currently trying to recruit some entertainers for the theater. And tell me about the Lucky 38. Don't know much about it, to tell the truth. That's where Mr. House and his Securitrons are set up, and no one's been in there as long as people can remember. Probably best that you just ignore it. Okay, so that's not actually a casino anymore. No one goes inside. So no one really met Mr. House for quite some time. That's still very suspicious. Ask away. Um, what else is there to do besides the casinos? Well, there's Vault 21 and the NCR Embassy. Both places are located on the south side of the Strip. Vault 21 is a small hotel and gift shop. It's not as nice as the casinos, mm. but it's a whole hell of a lot cheaper. The NCR Embassy is the headquarters for the NCR on the Strip. The Ambassador and his offices are there as well as the MP headquarters. Right, I actually have to go there. I got invited by the Ambassador. So, yeah, thanks for that information. Ma'am? Alright, well, um... Is there anything else in here that I can do? Well, we have some restrooms that are probably just empty. I say normally, yeah. Uh, but um, I think I've seen like a staircase. So, Hello. evening. Let's have a look at that too. Have a nice day. Um, thank you, Mr. Securitron. All the vending machines are off limits. Oh, uh, this is the monorail, is it not? Yeah, I could take the monorail back to Camp McCarran. Okay, yeah, I don't really want to do that at the moment, but um, it's good to know that this is here. <laughs> of course, I could just fast travel, probably. But um, I can also take the train. And there we go. Sun is going down again. So it should be getting dark pretty soon. Oh, look at this. This is actually a person with a name. If you don't mind, I have to look after my husband. What's up with your husband? What are you and he up to out here on the strip? I don't know. Gambling, probably? He's got his reasons. And when that man gets a notion stuck in his head, he's like a bighorn or bull that's seen red. And if it means Heck Gunderson's involved, then you better step aside before the stampede tramples you over. Who is Heck Gunderson? If that's what you want to talk about, go see Walter. He'll talk your ear off. Everything he says about the evils of Heck Gunderson is true, but I've never held the notion that fighting evil with evil carries the world forward. Okay, so your husband has some kind of beef with that um, Heck Gunderson? Um, is there some way I could help you out? Is there? I don't suppose you have the magic powers necessary to bring my husband to his senses, do you? Mm. 
He swears he won't leave this godforsaken city until he's seen Hex suffer. So far as I can see, we're the only ones in pain. Well, I have pretty decent skills of, uh, you know, convincing people. So maybe I can actually do something for you. I can't promise, but I will give it a try. That's very kind of you. Maybe this will be the dawn of a new day. Okay, um... So, where exactly is your husband? Feeble will. Anyway, I think... Good to see you again. Um, there were some questions that I could ask. Yes, where are you from? Oh, a good ways west of here, in a place you've never been. Far as we're concerned, only name it ever had was Phoebus Ranch. That was before we lost some land to Heck Gunderson. The bank demanded payment in full the day after the Stockman's Association bailed it out. Okay, so you lost some land to this Gunderson person and now your husband is out for revenge. Um, what's life like as a bighorn rancher? <laughs> I don't know, tell me about it. A good life if you don't mind hard work. The only real fuss is the constant bother with varmints. Fail to catch mole rats early in their breeding, and you'll have three or four head breaking their ankles in mole rat holes <laughs> every day. Of course, the worst varmint of all is a Brahmin baron with his hands in the pockets of a Republic senator. That's a problem you can't solve with a varmint rifle, though I fear my husband's apt to try. He's got Heck Gunderson <laughs> in his sights right now. Okay, um... I understand. I guess I will try to find him and uh, see if I can convince him or do something else about this little problem. All right, goodbye. All right, goodbye, lady. Now, let's have a look. This is a quest, optional. Either Phoebus wants her husband, Walter, to forget about Heck Gunderson and return to their ranch. Okay. Um, Wish I could have seen what's inside the 38. Oh, well, this is actually him. Why why are you sitting over here next to another woman? <laughs> this is strange, but okay. Howdy, young lady. How can I help you? But make it quick. Goddamn heat's worse in this town than in the middle of a Brahmin herd at noon. Perception. Oh, six of seven. Then have, I don't know, some water or something. <laughs> Do I really need seven perception? to see that he's, like, thirsty. You're not from around here, are you? Are you a big horn rancher? Hmm. Yeah, sure, let's ask a few questions. Darn far it is, our ranch. Ethel would be happy to yap about that. I got more important things in mind, kid. Yeah, like, uh, trying to get back at Gunderson, huh? Big horn is my trade since I was a young'un. I confess, it's hard living these days, kid. The wasteland ain't the same anymore. How so? I know it better than my wife's corset. What about it, kid? Um, how do wastelanders cope with current times? What are the most dangerous places in the wastelands? Well, those are all interesting questions. Stealing our pure breed resolve, that's how. We faced the wasteland right in the old mug and told her to shove it. <laughs> Listen, we own these lands. And I'll be damned if the NCR, those Legion bastards, or anyone else tries to walk all over us. Well, but you're just one person and they have an army, so I think your resolve is not going to uh, stop them. <laughs> um, yeah, what are the most dangerous places in the wasteland? Hell, it's all dangerous. Know why? Because you can't trust anything that stands on two legs. If you're looking for real trouble, head straight into the mountains. Men don't walk up there. For good reasons, kid. Okay, uh, the mountains. <laughs> I'll make note of it. All right, kid. Be good. So I can't actually talk to him about his Gunderson problem. Howdy. Good seeing you. I mean, if I had more perception, then maybe this would give me some result. Um, I mean, at some point I want to get some of these implants. Now, perception is not exactly high on my list of skills that I want to improve, but maybe at some point I will actually get another point in perception and then I can come back and see if this is going to help me in some form. All right, kid. 
Be good. But for the time being, it doesn't seem that there's anything I can do about it. Oh, a vendor. Howdy. Interested in a refreshing beverage or a tasty snack? Um, not really, but Apani, I can ask you some questions too. So do you work for one of the casinos? Nope. Strictly independent. Well, kind of independent. To vend anything here on the Strip, you gotta register with one of those police robots and sign a franchisee agreement. Okay. At the end of each day, you keep half of what you made. The rest you hand over to those bots. And they know if you're cheating. Okay. So, basically, Mr. House gets half of each day's take? Yep, he makes the rules. It's steep, but it sure beats living in North Vegas. Here on the Strip, I can afford to eat. And no one tries to kill me. Well, that's worth something, I suppose. So what exactly do you sell? Non-alcoholic beverages and snack foods. The casinos get to sell booze. Okay. No one else does. So they have a monopoly on that. Can you tell me more about the Strip? It's the most amazing place in the world, don't you think? This must be what it was like to live a thousand <laughs> years ago. There are three casinos open for business. Gamora, the Tops, and the Ultralux. They get nicer in that order. This here's the monorail station leading in from Camp McCarran. Most of my business is with soldiers coming and going on furlough. I don't think that a thousand years ago stuff looked like this. A few hundred years maybe, but <laughs> a thousand years was quite different. But I'm guessing they don't have a very good sense of history, you know, pre-war history. <laughs> but okay, uh, show me what you have for sale. Take your pick. Uh, well, this is just the usual stuff that you can find, and I don't really need any of it. Alright, so I should be checking some of the people that walk around here. At least some of them might be more than just NPCs. What about this guy, for example? The NCR is fortunate to have your support. Well, apparently... I have it written on my face that I'm a supporter of the NCR. Well, people just recognize my face for whatever reason. It's just a trooper. Don't be carrying any guns into the casino. Yeah, I, I thought about that. They're just going to take it from me. Um, the Ultra Lux. Yeah, sure. Why not uh, check out this place? Apparently, this is the nicest casino of them all, so let's go in big. Beg your pardon, but could I trouble <laughs> you to turn over your weapons? Why do you wear this creepy mask? Keep hold on weapons, sure, here you go. Well, apparently, they are doing more thorough security checks because... <laughs> I cannot keep my holdout weapon, um, and I could keep it in the Tops Casino, that one little knife. But yeah, I guess I'll have to surrender my weapons. <laughs> could I trouble you to blow it out your ass? But I mean, I want to go inside, so I guess I'll just... My deepest apologies for the slightest up. inconvenience. You have my assurance that everything will be returned upon your departure. But we simply can't have anyone waving their weapons around in the hotel. It's not the atmosphere we wish to cultivate. Please, enjoy your stay. Okay, so what kind of atmosphere do you want to cultivate? Like a creepy masquerade? And yeah, apparently this is like one of the White Glove Society. They'll be handled with the utmost security in our bank. Uh-huh, well, I guess I'll have to take your word for it. Pleasure speaking to you. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what to think about you, Mr. White Glove Greeter. Oh, um, that was actually part of a quest. I think it was part of the quest um, that was all about learning about the different families and factions. So, nothing too special. Um, yeah, maybe I want to play a bit more Blackjack now that I have increased my luck a little bit. But let's see if there's anyone I can talk to. Welcome to Top Shelf. The ah. drinks cost twice as much during happy hour, but they draw twice the attention, too. She also has a creepy mask. Apparently this is just, you know, what everyone's wearing around here. 
Okay, and yeah, she has the alcoholic beverages. Don't want it at the moment. Hey. Also, why? The honcho of one of them strip families got killed right in his own casino. Why does you this know guy have a gun? You off the wrong guy. Hey. Gun is on hired hand. Oh. Um. So is one of you Gunnison? Yes, it's this guy. But why is he allowed to carry a gun? Come on, guys. Do your job. This hey guy there. has a gun. <laughs> you watch yourself around, Mr. Gunderson. But they don't really seem to care about the fact that he has a gun. Brim has a new sheriff. That should keep the powder gangers <laughs> away. Apparently, even Mr. Gunnison has heard about the new sheriff of Prim. Beg your pardon, stranger, but I'm looking for someone. You ain't seen a young man with dark brown hair and a white hat on lately, have you? Um, probably not. I've been meeting a lot of people. No, I haven't. L yes, I saw him. I saw him here in the hotel. Um, I'm not sure if it would really benefit to lie because I, I couldn't tell him where I found him or give him any more, you know, description. So I think that lie would uh, be discovered very quickly. <sighs> Ain't nobody got one darn piece of news about my boy. Not one lousy speck of information. Ain't got one Brahmin unaccounted for across a dozen ranches. But I'm here for an hour and my own son just up and disappears on me. So your son has disappeared. So you're a rancher. Why is your bodyguard allowed to have a gun? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, let's just ask all of them. Yep, got a whole mess of Brahmins to my name. Bighorners too. Used to just have the one ranch. But land was easy to grab mm -hmm. before the soldiers moved in. So I heard. Before I knew it, I was running one of the biggest ranching operations east of California. Now everywhere I go, folks I never even met shake my hand and call me Mr. Gunderson. Don't quite know what to make of that. Well, I, I guess you kind of asked for it by, you know, becoming such an important person. But I know the feeling, you know, all the time people come to me and tell me, oh, you're the one who is famous with the NCR and oh, uh, I have a job for you. So I can feel your pain. I didn't really ask for that either. It just happened. But yeah, why is your bodyguard allowed to have a gun? Made me a special arrangement with the hotel. They want to do business with me. They got to play by my rules. A lot of people out there resent success. Might want to take a swipe mm. at me. This makes them think twice. If I'd have been thinking, though, I'd have had him watching my boy instead. <laughs> then none of this would have happened. Yeah, probably that would have been a good idea. But you're right about that. There's someone outside who wants to take a swipe at you. But yeah, sure, tell me about your son. My boy, Ted. He was right here. I didn't leave him but a minute. I told him to stay put while I talked some things over with the white glove folks. He was never one to stay tied down to a spot, though. Gets that from his mother. Got most of my staff out looking for him now. I'd be out myself, but I keep hoping he'll show up back here. Of course, if he does that, I'll whoop him till his skinny hide turns to leather for putting me through this. But that don't mean I wouldn't be grateful. <laughs> so how old is your son exactly? Let me help find your son. What business did you have here at the hotel? Um, did you say something about a white glove? Um, I guess I can try to f uh, help him find his son. I'm not sure if this is going to help me in any form with another quest. But, uh, I guess it doesn't hurt to ask. I'd be more than happy to have you. Heck, I'll hire anybody with a pair of legs and at least one good eye. Okay, that's point. a different quest. There'd be a lot of money in it for you if you can get him back to me safe. And if he ain't, you can bet I'll pay for the names of the sons of bitches responsible. Okay. Um, well, I, I see what I can do. So, let's ask the other questions, too. That's between me and the White Glove Society. But let's just say they control the food supply around here, and I got lots of food to give. But that ain't as welcome as you might think. Okay, so you have some business with the White Glove Society, but you don't want to tell me what exactly. That's what they call themselves, the folk that run this place. They're the ones dressed all fancy with their bow ties and shiny mm -hmm. dresses. Some of them got masks, too. Yeah, that's weird. Real hard to trust folks like that. 
A couple of them show their faces, and that's who I do my business okay. with. Okay. I don't talk to none of the other ones. I can kind of understand you. Okay, well, um, that's all I can ask for the time being. I'll be here. So, um, again, let's have a look at the quest, because... Well, I mean, it did give me new quest, but it also updated this one. Heck, Gunderson is looking for his disappeared son. Talk to Walter Phoebus about, the, about this. So now I can go back to Walter and tell him about the son. Um, do we suspect him to be involved in this? Maybe he killed the son out of revenge? Or did something else? And, yeah, there's another quest beyond the beef. Get Ted back to his father if he is still alive. Ask around the Ultra Lux for information regarding Ted's Gunnison, Ted Gunnison's disappearance. Okay, um, well, hey. since we're here, I guess I will uh, start doing that. And, yeah, I might want to do a little Did bit of gambling. All stirred up lately? No, I didn't know that. Top Shelf is the premier bar on the Strip. The drinks are overpriced, but that's the whole so, point. Okay. Now I'm guessing, though, that I can't just ask the those masks make me nervous. nondescript Is NPCs. Wrong with their faces? But I should look for people who actually have a name. And yeah, I can't. I can't play because I need to uh, exchange my money first. Hello. Trying to elevate your status by being seen with me. Um, it won't work. I think it's actually the other way around. Yeah. I'm famous. So I've been told anyway. <laughs> hey. Um, so let's see. Anyone else I can talk to? Have you been inside our bathhouse? The salts in the water work to balance the bodily humors. I haven't, but it sounds great. Okay, um, I'm not seeing anyone I can talk to. Well, this guy is maybe... No, this is just a normal gambler too. You watch yourself around, Mr. Gunderson. Those masks make me nervous. Is there something wrong with their faces? But you're still here. You could just go to a different casino. Anyway, do we have anyone to talk to over here? Oh, this is where I can exchange my money. Salutations. The salutations, indeed. Humbly at your service. <laughs> they are creepily polite. I, I'm beginning to understand what people have been talking about. Um... Yeah. How many chips would you like? Let's just get some money that we can Here's your chips. gamble Is there away. anything else I can help you with? I mean, I have a bit better luck now, but um, I'm not a sure... A pleasure doing business. ...if that's going to be enough to actually make some profit. But I do intend to get, like, a new implant for even more luck at some point. So... I guess I'll have another try it blackjack or do I want to play some roulette? I mean roulette is just purely luck. I think I would prefer a game where I can actually do something myself other than just, you know, hey. losing money. <laughs> so, there we go. Um, yeah, let's just bet a little bit more. Let's just go in with 30. Why not? Well, okay, now now we actually have a decent hand. Ten, well, I will need more than that. Eighteen. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll stay. Yee, I won. Okay. Um, that's eighteen again. Or eight. So I could try to get a better hand. But honestly, 18 is decent. Let's stay. Nope, that wasn't good enough. I should have taken another card. 16. Ugh. 16 is the worst number of all. Oh, well. Apparently, my luck is starting to pay off. Uh, 11, yep. I'm going to need more, and that's 21 again. Well, maybe that one point in luck is actually doing something here. I mean, that was like a suspicious streak of luck, a short one, but um, still. 15, yeah. 
19. I'll take it. There we go. I've won again. Now I'm actually um, starting to like this game. 20. I'll stay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, sure. Let's deal one more hand and... Uh, I think then we will continue with our um, real mission and again, that's a good hand. I'll stay. Okay. I actually made some profits here. So let's just um, exchange the money again and uh, then we will continue to look around this place a little bit. I might gamble a little bit off camera um, hey. once I have more luck just to get a bit more money but I probably won't be doing a lot of that on camera because it's Greetings. probably not that interesting Humbly to watch at your service. so yeah um yeah I want in what currency would you like your payout non caps currencies will have fractions paid out in caps I guess I may as well get them in caps I mean do I really need legion money for anything else caps it is will there be anything else Nope. Okay, so I got 220 bottle caps for my 120, 120 uh, uh, ultra lux caps. Okay. A pleasure doing business. Anyway, um, is there anything else to this place? Oh yeah, there is. So, Mortimer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not wearing a mask. That's good. Let's talk. How may I be of service, madam? Um, let's see. Do you have any work that needs to be done? Well, do you? No, not from the likes of you, I'm afraid. Wow. I don't think you'd have the stomach for it. Better look elsewhere. The stomach? I mean, I could understand if you said you don't have the style or the elegance or the proper outfit, but the stomach? Really? But okay, what can you tell me about your organization? My, such a popular question. <laughs> I suppose it is only natural to see us and wonder what it is that makes us special. The White Glove Society has only just made itself known to the public, of course. But our pedigree was established over generations. Really? Were we always so refined? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said yes. But I've always felt we were destined for a place atop modern society. And now, here we are. Not everyone can wear the finest clothes and eat the finest foods, obviously. Uh -huh. That's just the reality we live in. But surely we can agree that the most tasteful, sophisticated people are the most deserving. Do you and that's ever what the White Glove Society talking? is all about. Um, you're a bit of a twit, are you not? Goodbye. Indeed. Okay, so Evening. you're all about being posh and superior. Okay, and um, Apani, that actually updated my quest. Um, but which of my many quests? Uh, I honestly don't fully remember. Oh, this one. Find out more about the White Glove Society by talking to Marjorie. Tell the yes man that you've decided to ignore the White Glove Society. <laughs> um, I'm currently leaning towards that, uh, but I guess I should uh, make sure that I talk to everyone before I make that decision. Hello. Door to the Gourmand at the Ultra Lux. Okay. Is this a restaurant of this place? I mean, I will say this, this place does look a lot better than some of the other places, especially because it looks, you know, somewhat more well-maintained. It's not quite as run down. I mean, there are also like cracks in the, in the uh, wall, but overall, this place looks a lot, you know, nicer, not quite as destroyed as some of the other places. How do you do? Okay, this over here is Marjorie. Welcome to the Ultralux. I do hope it exceeds your every expectation. I haven't really made up my mind yet, so do you work here? I do, but one can hardly call it work. 
I think of myself as a caretaker rather than a common laborer. Of course you do. I suppose it is a labor of love if it can be called labor at all. We at the White Glove Society are all responsible for maintaining the beauty and class of the Ultra Lux. And as its founder, I suppose it falls to me to decide how we go about it. Okay, so you have been founding this place. I'm looking for someone who went missing here recently. Heck Gunnison said he was here to talk business with you. What business? <laughs> I'm not sure if she's just going to tell me about that. But I guess we can talk about the missing son. This again? I thought this was all settled. I answered every one of that investigator's questions to his satisfaction and gave all the help I could. I know our huh. reputation hasn't always been spotless, but that's all in the past now. How some people can't get over it is beyond me. For the last time, the White Glove Society has never and will never consume human <laughs> flesh for any reason. It's written mm -hmm. in the Charter. I, I find it slightly disconcerting that you feel the need to emphasize that. Also, why has there been an investigator? Are we talking about the same thing? Who did you talk to about the disappearance? Right. There was an investigator who came through here last week. He'd been hired by a young man whose bride-to-be went missing during their stay huh. here. Well, you can already guess what probably happened, can't you? It seems perfectly likely that she got cold feet and ran off. And that young groom just didn't have a clue, the poor dear. So, we have at least two people missing. The son and the bride. I'm investigating someone else, a man, and he just recently went missing. Is there any way I could talk to the investigator? The White Glove Society used to eat human flesh. <laughs> yeah, why would you even point that out? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm actually uh, looking for someone else. A man? Well, then this... Well, this can't be. Two disappearances in my hotel? Mm -hmm. What will people say? I'm going to have a word with my staff about security on the premises. Whether these people are found or not, our guests simply must feel safe in their own rooms. I agree. So, um, can I talk to this investigator, maybe? Why, yes, I think so. If he hasn't checked out yet, that is. I had our maitre d' Mortimer offer him a complimentary room for as long as it took for him to be satisfied. You see, the White Glove Society remains the very picture of courtesy, even in the face of such impolite <laughs> accusations. We have nothing to hide here. I'm not sure about that. For example, you're hiding your faces, or a lot of you anyway. So, um, that's just a starter. But yeah, what is this about the White Glove Society and human flesh. Now, didn't I already tell you that we don't do that sort of thing? <laughs> we do not engage in cannibalism here under any circumstances. Though we haven't always been the White Glove Society. There was another time, a dark time, when we went by a different name. Okay. But that's all changed now. We've evolved past such base impulses since settling into our new home. I've seen to it that those days are behind us. Um, well, that is good to know. It's okay, I eat people too, you can tell me the truth. Um, hmm. I don't know if that's really going to work. I mean, I'm tempted to use this option. <laughs> uh, but maybe I'm going to save this for later if necessary. I mean, I find it very suspicious that she is so defensive about it in the first place, so, um... I wouldn't be surprised if they are still eating people. <laughs> but sure, let's ask about Heck Gunnison and his business too. What else? Mr. Gunderson and I have been discussing his livestock. It's put us in a rather delicate position, you see, his coming here. Not that we aren't grateful for his generous offer. But our executive chef, Philippe, has transformed Brahmin steak into a delicacy. He really is a genius. Everyone mm -hmm. wants it. But a delicacy is just that. Delicate. If everyone can get it, it ceases to be a delicacy. It becomes a perfectly ordinary staple. And if the gourmand serves staples, it would no longer draw the caliber of people it deserves. It would be a diner or a family restaurant. 
So as much as we'd all love for there to be enough steak for everyone, I'm afraid there are more important things to consider. Okay, but it is Brahmin meat and not human flesh, right? I mean, since Gunnison is a rancher, I'm going to assume he wants to sell you stuff and not buy it. So you don't want to buy his Brahmin meat because you don't want to sell too much of it because it needs to stay a delicacy. I am not sure if I believe this, but okay. Ta-ta. Uh, Ta-ta indeed. I have my eyes on you, Marjorie. Something fishy is going on here. Anyway, um, let's have a look at the quest. Inquire with Mortimer at the Ultra Lux about the investigator. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I talked to Madri. So now I have to decide if I want to ignore the White Glove Society. Or I have to, I don't know, continue to investigate this pr place, probably. Did you know the strip's all stirred up lately? Uh, well, someone else mentioned that already. I don't know. Let's just look around this place and see if we can find hey. uh, someone to talk to. So is this your famous steak over here? Brahmin steak. Well, the game tells me that it's a Brahmin steak. Should I believe it? Got a bunch of travelers. The food here is to die for. No one cooks Brahmin like Philippe. Okay, okay. For the price of this meal, I could buy a whole Brahmin, but I'd never make that trip. <laughs> For the price of this meal, I could buy a whole Brahmin, but I'd never Did make you that know trade. the strips all stirred up lately? Um, yeah, people keep saying that. For the price of this meal, I could buy a whole Brahmin, <laughs> but I'd never make that trade. Okay, I get it. People really love your Brahmin steak. Hmm. Well, um, can I maybe buy some of that? You look positively famished. We simply can't have that. Well, show me what you got. You won't find better. Um, well, that's the Brahmin steak, but it is not very expensive, so it's probably not the special Brahmin steak. <laughs> right? I mean, I need the gourmand Brahmin steak. But yeah, I don't really need any of the rest. Pleasure speaking to you. Salutations. Um, yeah, can I can I not buy one of your special Brahmin steaks and then investigate it with my science skill? Our executive chef Belief is the toast of New Vegas. His Brahmin Wellington is absolutely sublime. Or maybe I can talk to your chef. I mean surely he must be around here somewhere. Door to hey. Ultra Lux Kitchen. Hmm, but it's locked and I'm not sure if I can just pick that lock in plain sight of everyone else. I mean it's easy. So How do you fare? Wouldn't be too difficult for me to lock pick it. I think I have enough skill for easy. At least if I use like a magazine. But yeah, um something fishy is going on here. I can feel it. But I guess I will quickly head back to Mortimer, the twat over here, and talk to him again. How may I be of service, madam? I have some questions. I've heard your group dines on human flesh. That is very blunt. But yeah, let's ask for the investigator first. Private investigator. Ah, yes, I remember the gentleman. This was about the missing bride. Such an awful thing. I do hope he finds her whereabouts. If I might pry, have you found something that will help his investigation? Actually, I just need to speak with him. Yes, I have some critical information for him. Hmm, now that might be an interesting lie. Because if uh, I tell him that I found something, then maybe this will, you know, cause him to do something. And he gets nervous because he's afraid that I'm finding out something about the missing bride. 
So, sure, let's actually try this little lie over here. Good. I hope that young man gets some closure after all he's been through. Now, ordinarily, we don't give out guest information, but I think given the circumstances, he'll want to speak with you. Let's see. He hasn't checked out yet. If you head back to the hotel rooms, his will be one floor directly above you after you exit the lobby. I hope we can put this whole matter to rest at last. Okay, um, well, that lie actually helped me. He gave me a key. It didn't really help in the way that I thought it would, because I thought that maybe he would be getting nervous and, you know, gave away some information because he's getting nervous, but he actually seems to be willing to help. <laughs> so, should I tell him about the human flesh? Ah, yes. I've heard that one too. Jealous people say such nasty things. Mm -hmm. I feel sorry for them. Speech 62, a lie. I too know what it is to feel the craving. How can I support your cause? Hmm. Okay. Well, this is basically the same rule that I could pull with Marjorie, but this time it's a speech check which I can pass. So I feel I should be taking this because this may actually give me some results. Good. And you know what it is to be uh -huh. discreet in matters of nutrition. Okay. Perhaps you can help me. I'm in a bind. I've been planning an exquisite society dinner, but there's a bit of a problem with the main <laughs> course. He's got a powerful and temperamental okay. father. Okay. Yeah. Um I think I know what you who you're talking about. He's the least of your problems right now, Cannibal. Um but okay, I need to find out where they are keeping um, Gunderson's son. Um, I think you have the wrong person for this job. The main cause is a person. Of course it is. That's the whole uh, deal of our little deception here, right? Yes, the wrong person. We scouted the right one for weeks. The heir to a mercantile empire. Sort of a black sheep. He cut ties with his family and left their estate to wander. He was ideal, corn-fed and well-to-do, but no one to miss him if he were to disappear. Unfortunately, the trap my subordinate set for him failed, and as he escaped, he saw their faces. Now he's wary. Okay. What did you do? I think you have the wrong person for this job. Um, no, let's, let's continue this and see if we get more information out of him. I asked for a last-minute replacement. And they stole the son of the most dangerous Brahmin mm -hmm. baron in New Vegas while he stayed at this very hotel. Okay, there we go. Needless to say, this could be a disaster if things aren't put back the way they should be. And I still need somebody <laughs> reputable to serve for dinner. Strictly speaking, we're no longer allowed to eat people. But I'm hoping the right person and preparation mm -hmm. might sway Marjorie to see things my way. Okay, so Marjorie is against it, but you are still doing it. Um... Yeah, let's continue to play along. I need a replacement, and I need the boy taken care of. The replacement must be healthy and well-bred. One can't very well make steak from gristle. <laughs> With so little time, we'll have to go after our original choice, Carlisle St. Clair. He lives in a shack north of here. For freshness, we need him alive. If you could send him here or knock him out with this and drag him into the dumpster next to his house, we can do the rest. <laughs> Kettle prod added. Um, okay. What about the boy you kidnapped? Wouldn't putting Sinclair's body into a dumpster give it a terrible taste? That's a good point. But I'm mostly interested in um, the boy you kidnapped. Ted Gunderson is his name. <laughs> It would be simplest if we could convince him this was all an unfortunate misunderstanding. But if he won't listen, we can't very well let him go. He'll have to be slaughtered <laughs> and served. Then we wouldn't need the replacement. But you would need to deal with his father, Heck. Perhaps if you could smear some of Ted's blood around his father's hotel room, you could frame him. Um, lie, I'll do it. Where can I find Ted Gunderson? Couldn't Heck just claim intruders killed his son? Hushed, would my companion here make a suitable replacement meal? <laughs> oh my god, I can offer Veronica as a meal. Um, I don't know, this is getting more and more complicated. But I guess if I want to continue 
the deception I need to use the lie option because I need to find Ted Gunnison and then I can like free him maybe splendid splendid the boy is being held in the kitchen beneath the gourmand here are some keys that will allow you access okay, to Okay, here we go. The elder Gunderson is staying in our penthouse. I understand he's hired security, so be careful if you go up there. Mm -hmm. And our Mr. St. Clair resides to the north. <laughs> he rarely strays far from his house, and he surrounded it with booby traps. Okay, okay. Um, so I got another key, so I should be able to free um, Ted now. Um, and yeah, I still have to look for the investigator, but I think I'm going to find him. So let's just leave this uh, terrible person for the time being. Indeed. But yeah, I knew he was a twat the first time I talked to him. Anyway, this whole quest took a very dark turn all of a sudden. And I guess we will continue it in the next episode because this one is getting very long. So as usual, thank you for watching and see you again next time. <laughs>